And I welcome you back to the Debrinic Channel. Today we are talking about a mega flood along the Colorado River. What would happen to the Glen Canyon Dam and what would happen to the Hoover Dam and all the other dams below there. We are going to examine and here we go. While the drought in the west has eased, would a mega flood cause lake failure along the Colorado River? We will explore. This takes us on a history lesson. In 1983, the Colorado River had inflows at Lake Powell of over 120,000 CFS. In 1983, Lake Powell upstream from the Hoover Dam had 120,000 cubic feet per second coming out of the lake spillway, causing cavitation in the spillway tunnels, which led to major damage in the spillway tunnels. The Bureau of Reclamation was in trouble. They had to find a solution to this problem. They come up with a way to build a wall on top of Lake Powell. They went to work building a temporary wall on top of the spillway to create more storage space. This allowed for more storage room in the reservoir, creating time to inspect the tunnels that had been damaged. The lake was at its max, very little wiggle room, although in 1983 they saved Lake Powell by adding a four-foot wall. In 1984, the weather turned worse. In 1984, the Colorado River had the most water that the Colorado River had ever seen since the dams had been built. This was due to the high amount of snowfall received into the Colorado Rockies. They were still Still fixing the spillway cavitation problem, they have built a bigger wall on top of Lake Powell. This wall towered 8 foot instead of 4 foot like the first initial wall that was built. So this was the second wall that they built onto Lake Powell. They forecasted 140,000 CFS into the lake. In 1984, they fixed the cavitation by building airways into the top of the spillway, allowing the water to have breathing tubes and stop the high water of water cavitation problems. This saved Lake Powell, but can Lake Powell be saved? Let's examine. Scientists are really concerned about atmospheric rivers that come along the west coast and some of those atmospheric rivers have made it all the way to the Colorado River system including the Green River and a lot of that happens in an El Nino pattern. We are going towards an El Nino pattern and it's been a very long time since we've been in a major flood. 1984 was the last major flood that hit the Colorado River and that was almost 40 years ago. It's normal for long periods of dry weather in in the west as it is a desert as it has the sierra mountain range blocking a lot of the moisture gobbling it all up and not allowing it to rain there as much but on occasion you get the perfect storm that dumped 27 Mississippi rivers onto the Colorado River system, and it has happened in the past. So once this happens again, and it will happen again, it's just a matter of when, not if, will we be prepared? Right now, the answer is no. Scientists have gone to the Green River from 160 miles north of Lake Powell in Mohab, Utah, to do some studying in the canyon by rock climbing. They were looking for sandbars, sediment, and driftwood. They have found that the river has exceeded a 1984 flood and has had water flows of 275,000 cubic feet along the river walls. That's insane. As a matter of fact, they said that some of those scientists were as high as 60 feet above the river floor where they started. So that is a huge amount of water that would be heading towards Lake Powell. This has happened five times in the past. If a perfect flood would hit the Colorado River at the same time as the flood of a green river, they would have around 500,000 CFS coming right towards Lake Powell. This is alarming for Lake Powell, which can only handle 150,000 CFS, making the 1984 flood seem like a minor flood. The 150,000 is the max discharge that Lake Powell can handle. Those flows, in a worst case scenario, would be no match for Lake Powell. Lake Powell would be destroyed, no matter if they put an 8-foot barrier on there or not. It would just overtop the 8-foot barrier, causing big problems for the entire system downstream. Wow. Many scientists have warned the Bureau of Reclamation to tear down Lake Powell or increase their overflow to a higher amount, and I would say a million would be more than adequate. But if you do that there, then you need to do that at Lake Mead as well, and you need to do that at Lake Mojave, and you need to do that all the way down the system to ensure that there would be no flooding that these lakes couldn't handle. It would be a huge undertaking 
but it could be done. Lake Powell would be destroyed, causing a major wall of water heading towards Lake Mead, although Lake Mead can handle around 500,000 CFS if all the turbines are running, that would be no match for a whole lake and trillions of gallons of water that would be heading towards Lake Mead. The safest place at Lake Mead would be to be on top of the canyon or top of the interstate bridge that passes to the south of Lake Mead. Once Lake Mead was destroyed, Lake Mojave would be no match for it. Now you would have two lakes heading right towards Lake Mojave causing more destruction. Up next would be Lake Havasu. All my friends, if you hear words of this, get out and get out quick. It would wipe Lake Havasu off the map. Parker, Arizona would be wiped off the map as well. This for sure would cause the river to run free like it once did and make it all the way to Mexico. Mexico would be in trouble as well. It would ultimately go out into the Gulf of California and sediment would be returned and it would be a bad thing. Mother Nature would win and man would lose this battle. There would be nothing they could do except for sit there and watch and wait. This would be the worst flooding that no one has ever seen in modern day. To make matters worse, the aftermath would cause the economy to collapse. Once the water receded, there wouldn't be any dams to hold back the millions of gallons needed to supply towns like Phoenix, Los Angeles, San Diego, Las Vegas, and other cities. Farmers, factories, and other things would be in a world of trouble as well with no water coming in. They wouldn't be able to produce the goods that needed to go around the world. Las Vegas might be saved if debris didn't fall into the pipes at the bottom of the river that they completed in 2015 that they put in in case of a drought now they would use it for sucking water out of a river instead of a lake very very disturbing situation furthermore lake bead is clear at the dam because there's no water flows all the water sediment has fallen to the bottom of the river upstream making it clear at the end of the lake and now you'll have a raging river which will cause las vegas to have to spend more money cleaning the water which they're probably not accustomed to because of lack of sediment in this water it's already has settled Therefore, it's fairly clean when it comes into the system. Farmers and everybody else would just be out of water. You are talking about the worst man-made disaster to ever hit any river system in the world. The river can handle that system. That's not the problem. It's just that there would be no water left once the system got done draining. And then if another drought would happen, which the probabilities are good as we're finding out, then what do you do? You'll have no water whatsoever. So, what do you guys think leave your comments below keep it civil this will happen again time is running out it is of the essence and the clock is ticking that's all i have for today i hope you guys enjoyed the video and we will see you on the next one god bless